Hi guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with something a little bit different. As of this exact second, the time that this video went live, I am standing across the table from an opponent in the first ever Old World tournament being held in Warhammer World. Today, the recording of this is actually the Thursday beforehand and I am going to be spending today getting ready for that event, prepping the last bits of models that I need to do, any basing finishes off, we need to get army lists printed, finalized, all that stuff. That's what today's video is gonna be about, prep and preparation for a tournament. And I have a couple of key points of information that I think everybody should know if they want to attend an event like this, how to get the most out of it and get the enjoyment they deserve. I will be sharing this entire weekend with my patrons. They will be getting a live update after every game, how it went, how good it went or how terrible it went, my excuses or my triumphs. And all those kind of bits and pieces. If that's something that interests you, you want to get involved with the kind of daily vlogs that I give to those guys, it is all linked in the description below. You can check it out and, and join up and be part of the family. Okay, without further ado, let's get stuck in um, and find out what I need to do today um, and then get started with that. So step one, write a list. So obviously writing a list is super important to make sure that you don't forget to take anything or get anything done before you go on the event. Obviously, leaving things to the last minute is never the correct thing to do, but it is kind of like a tournament trope that you should be painting miniatures kind of the night before the event or whatever. And this is technically the night before the event for me because obviously I've got to transport uh, my army over tomorrow morning. So if I was in England and it was the night before, then stuff wouldn't get done. Um, I do like having completed armies. I don't know whether it's required at this event. I presume it is because it's a Games Workshop event. But any event that I go to, I do make sure that my army is fully painted um, just to kind of show respect to myself and to my opponent and do all that kind of good stuff. So having a hard, long think about all the bits and pieces that are required and that I need to bring to this event. The first thing on my list that I have written is to check the army. So I'm going to take out the entire army now, line it up see what state it's in and see what other bits and pieces of work need to be done to consider this uh, complete and ready for a tournament. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna start pulling out the army. I am also filled with quite a lot of pride for my Bretonian army. I think I did a really good job on this. Like obviously this has been the main focus of my old world attention since it first came out. And now the, like there's a whole bunch of stuff that's not on this table here. Like 1,500 points is just the tip of the iceberg for my current Bretonian project. A huge portion of it is fully painted and there is still a lot more to do and I will continue to paint Bretonians for the foreseeable future until it's all done. Okay, so this is the army as it currently stands. Most of it is of course done and ready to go. There is a couple of touch-ups and bits and pieces that I need to get through to finish it off 100%. So for instance, this new unit of Pegasus Knights that I did don't have any flock on their bases. And neither does my second unit of Knights of the Realm. In my previous list, when this army was at a thousand points, this unit was a unit of Knights Errant. But in order to bump up the amount of points I have in core, I had to jump them up to Knights of the Realm. Um, so I had to paint all new unit. I still have to layer up the metallics on them, I just realized. I actually didn't realize that hadn't been done until looking at the army now. That's a bit of a pain. And obviously I was five points short in my core still. So my compulsory unit of 10 men at arms got a banner. So my banner isn't even nearly painted. So I'm gonna have to paint that up for this unit as well. And then flock that up and do those kind of bits and pieces. So flock, flock, layer metallics, paint the banner. And then that's the army 100% complete. I have broken out my trusty art case, which I use for traveling. It is amazing at keeping armies safe on the go. And I reckon I should be able to get this entire force into that case uh, nice and safely, or at least that's the, the current plan. So yeah, let's go away and, and get that sorted. And of course, as is tradition, I am frantically applying grass tufts, normal grass flock layering up the metallics on that other green unit and i got the base coats and washes done on my um man at arms banner as well just so that when i'm doing him on stream this evening all i have to do is layer him up and add some transfers and you know flock to him so it should be a fairly quick easy and accessible thing to get done and obviously i spent about an hour an hour and a half here layering up these knights and then getting all the grass tufts and bases on them so it was really nice to see the kind of the whole army flocked and ready to go except for that one model but he will be done by the end of today. Using old school flock was a blast in the past, but it was really nice to do. 
Okay, so I now have, I believe, everything I need for the tournament hobby-wise laid out in this table so that I can go through it and make sure that I haven't forgotten anything. So first things first is the army itself. This is my 1500 points of Bretonians that I'm taking to the event. They are all fully painted bar one miniature, which is this banner bear for the man at arms unit. So one of these guys is actually being taken out and the banner is being included. And he will be finished painted on my stream this evening on Twitch. So he will be done later on tonight. That's what I'm going to do then. I think that's going to be awesome. I literally had to take him. I was five points under for my core allotment. So the easiest way to do that was to just add a banner to my, my, uh, my unit of man at arms. So yeah. As goes the list, I'm actually going to go into it at the end of this video. I'm going to show you some nice uh, footage and images of each and every unit and go through why I took them, how good they're going to be and what I think they're going to be useful for. I've of course gotten my two books, my rule book and my forces of fantasy book. I'm also going to be bringing my quick reference guide from the old world because it's super, super handy. I've got these awesome bases made, which are just basically knight bases, but without knights on it. People who are wondering what the hell they are for. I love the look of my movement trays. I love how they look uh, like they're all uh, one unit on one flat piece of ground. Whereas if you go with the normal kind of plastic games or trap bases, the, the gaps between all the bases is very evident. So in my army, if you lose, say for instance, two knights, they're dead from a unit. It means that I can just pop these guys in to replace the dead guys meaning that the unit still looks nice, still looks swish on the tabletop, even though it has taken casualties. I made 12 of them up. If that's not enough, then, you know, whatever. But I think 12 of them should be enough to uh, see me through uh, this event in this tournament. So really happy with those. I have my trusty uh, folder, which I actually got at Warhammer World many, many years ago. Inside this, I have my army lists, which I made 12 copies of. Don't ask me why I made 12. It makes sense in my head. I have got my uh, magic cards for the three lords of magic that my uh, damsel can have, although I am taking uh, elementalism because it is on my list. So I don't know why I'm taking the other ones. And I've got the high elf cards for Chin, who will be joining us on this lovely adventure. He got a ticket last minute, so his beautiful high elves will be seeing table. I, of course, have my dice, measuring tape, templates. I've got a couple of tokens for me, the fallback two inches, which is actually give ground two inches on my new ones. Um, so give ground and then of course the arcs of sight so for people wondering where you can see they go at the front of a unit and you can literally see the arcs of sight so I think these are really nice and um, I have made up these ones are my ones I've made up a stack of them uh, basically to give one of each to each of my opponents five guys across the two days as just a little gift or whatever just to be nice um, and they're really useful tools I've got my two templates with me for vortexes, a small one and a big one. Obviously they're three inch and five inch templates, but these ones are exactly three and five inch templates. They come from the old Storm of Magic template thing. So kind of bring those. And I have templates for Chin because I laser cut him up some because he doesn't have any for his new army. So I have those. I also have my Citadel Art case, my transport case. This was expensive when it was out, but it is a hard, heavy Pelican case. The Games Workshop brought out and it will transport my army safely through an air to two airports and on a flight. I have brought armies to Warhammer World with this case many times and it has saved my bacon many times. So it was a very good investment for me all those years ago and I've used it to death. So these are the bits and pieces that are required to come with me on the event. Like I said, I'm now going to go through what my army is going to be, why I'm taking certain units, have a quick chat about that and then I'll come to you guys at the end of the video with some of my predictions fears or any of those bits and pieces so hopefully you found this slightly useful and uh yeah i'll be back to you in a minute okay now i'm gonna go through the army list like i did talk about and i'm gonna go through each and every unit from start to finish starting with the lowest which is of course the 10-man unit of man at arms why am i taking this because it's compulsory it is necessary and needed to take in the the force the bare minimum you can take is a squad of 10. i have added a banner to this with my uh colleague timothy who's coming to me on this event thinks that is a terrible idea I should have taken a musician or a champion because the banner is obviously if someone runs down this unit they'll claim 50 points for a banner so obviously it is a bad choice but it just looks so cool and I think if someone's gotten the whole way through my back lines and managed to run down this unit the game is probably in a really bad choice for me already from here we move into the solid backbone of the army which is a squad of two separate squads of knights of the realm both six miles strong both with full command these things are you know heavy armor mounted barding they hit hard they don't die they're pretty solid. I wish they had more attacks, but what can you do? 
These things are best used when assaulting flanks, but unfortunately they do have to, a lot of the time, sacrifice themselves charging into the front to draw in enemies so my Grail Knights can attack the things that I need to, and my Pegs Knights can also assault and fight where they need to as well. So these guys tend to be the first units to die in my army, but they are definitely something that is very important, and if you use them correctly, they are very powerful. The next units that I'm going to talk about are my Pegasus Knights. My Pegasus Knights are something that really, really make this army work. If I didn't have my Pegasus Knights to fly up the flanks, get in behind people, destroy war machines, get in flank charges where I needed to do, be quite hard hitting, be quite resilient, 360 line of sight. These guys are absolute workhorses. Excuse the pun. And I really think these are something along with my Bretonian Duke on his Royal Pegasus 3 big powerful things flying around doing what they want to do huge threat range and i think people are gonna really really struggle to deal with these units across the weekend next up is the most powerful unit of my army which is of course the grail knights this is actually only a squad of, of five grail knights the sixth member being made up by my level four wizard my prophetess she is of course uh this is her bunker she casts a lot of spells to buff these guys up the the gift of the lady which gives them a five plus regen is the uh is my go-to spell i will trade any spell in the book just to make sure she carries that spell so when these guys hit something hard anything that say is strength five and they are attacking guys these guys get their three plus armor then a five plus reward and then a five plus regen removing these guys from the table is very difficult they also hit like a ton of bricks they've got two attacks apiece their strength four base which means strength six with the lances their initiative six their weapon skill set they're monsters so if these guys manage to make contact and hit you you're in a lot of trouble my level four prophetess is next. She is, like I said, on illusion. So she will be trying to get things like Plague of Rust off. Plague of Rust is a super important spell for things like Bretonians because they have so few attacks on the charge, although their attacks are quite strong. Their attacks need to mean something. So I can negate even a five plus uh, save to a no save, which means I get a bunch of more attacks through, which means my combat res swings more towards my way. It's going to be super good, including, of course, the uh, spell to boost the extra save on the Grail Knights. She also has Magic Res 2 as standard, so it means when spells are cast at the Grail Knight unit with her in it, she gets to dispel with a plus 6, which is incredible. So she's amazing, and I'm absolutely chuffed to have her in the list. And last, but by no means least, is my Duke on Royal Pegasus. This guy is going to destroy all at this event. He costs just under 400 points, and he is a monster killer he's actually just a character killer obviously he has a five plus regeneration save on top of his five plus ward save on top of his three plus armor save so he's a nightmare to kill he's got five wounds got five attacks and he has killing blow that affects both all infantry and all monsters so when this guy comes towards your dragon i would turn the other way and flee because he is literally in my army to destroy dragons and monsters and big things that other blocks of knights might struggle with he's extremely difficult to shift off the table and extremely killy so this guy i expect very high things from in the games so watch out for him if you see me okay guys and there we have it i think i am finally ready for the tournament in warhammer world i bought these tickets i think on the 2nd of january i have been excited to play uh, in this event ever since i'm so excited to be getting five great games of warhammer the old world in in a two-day span see what other people are bringing army wise um, and just, yeah, just see what else is out there, see how people are playing, see any tips and tricks, and to see how I do. At 1500 points, Bretonians are supposed to be quite strong at the moment, so I'm curious to see if I can win a couple of my games, um, or win the whole thing. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, like I said, one model left to do, I'll do that on stream this evening. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit of a kind of filler extra content. I'm not sure if everybody out there is super excited to find out what I'm taking for a tournament or how I'm preparing for a tournament, but I think some people will be. And for those people, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, give the video a like. Ask me any questions about anything I said in the video here today in the comments below. I will get back to absolutely everybody. If there's anybody out there who is watching this video and is at the event and wants to come over and say hi, please don't be shy. I'd love to meet absolutely everybody who is like me and is loving the old world at the moment. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the second video in this series where I spill all the beans on how the event actually went, good or bad, top units, worst units, strongest things that I faced, weakest things that I faced, and all the stuff in between. All right, guys, thank you so much for sticking at the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.